today we are going to cover derivatives uh, though i have prepared derivatives in a lot of detail still i found some people having problems in derivatives so let's study all the four kinds of derivatives last year uh, there were no questions on derivatives but uh, we never know because it's a part of the syllabus number one and uh, secondly it's a very important topic so it's better to do some questions on derivatives than just go blank secondly uh, this video is meant only for the students who have enrolled with me because uh, they have access to all the notes uh, so they will be able to understand what i'm going to tell uh, through this video better uh, uh, than the students who don't have access to the uh, notes that I have. Let's start with derivatives. First of all, what exactly is a derivative? As the statement goes, a derivative is a financial instrument which derives its value from an underlying asset. Let's take an example to understand this. Uh, let's uh, take the example of a coconut. A coconut has a hard shell on the outside and a lot of edible or eatable material on the inside which is coconut water as well as the milk that you have coconut milk so these two things are the main derivatives of coconut which is the hard shell from the outside now if you remove the underlying eatables like coconut milk and water what is the value of the hard shell which you have outside there is no value attached to it because it is not useful at all the value of the coconut is derived from coconut milk as well as coconut water and nothing else similarly a derivative's value is derived not from itself just like coconut shell has no value a derivative instrument on its own has no value its value is dependent on what lies beneath it what it is attached to and that attachment can be a commodity like rice wheat can be a currency dollars rupees anything else can be an interest rate as well so the attachment gave powers or gave value to a derivative in 2008 financial crisis this is what happened a lot of CDOs or collateralized debt obligations were issued in the market. Now what were they? They were derivatives, the value of whom were dependent not uh, were dependent on the value of the mortgage that were being raised by banks in the market. So say uh, there is a bank A and there is a person B. Bank person B goes to bank A and says sir I need a loan of 1 crore for buying a house bank A says okay the mortgage will be your house itself I will give you 1 crore the interest rate is 10% so every year you have to pay 10% interest on the loan that you take for the house okay so this is a normal contract now the bank has mortgage the bank has given 1 crore and it has papers for the mortgage for the house that it has taken as security and it is lying vacant. So what the bank can do is it can go to the market or it can go to a financial institution and say uh, hey uh, this is one mortgage security that I have which is lying vacant can you use it in any way and the financial institution says why not I will uh, issue a derivative whose value will be dependent on the value of this mortgage. If the loan payer keeps paying the interest rate regularly, then there is no problem. But if the loan payer does not stop paying the interest rate, then the value of this derivative will go down. So they started issuing securities or papers or whatever you can call it. Uh, you can call it anything. So they started using uh, issuing securities, which were called derivatives, in the financial market in the stock exchange whose value was based on the underlying asset which was the mortgage that was one example of derivative 
I hope you have understood what exactly is a derivative. Uh, a commodity derivative, uh, we can take an example of a commodity derivative as well. As price of rice increases or decreases, there is some rice in the market, the price of rice increases or decreases and there is a derivative which is attached to the value of the rice. So as the price of rice increases, the value of derivative can also go up or down. It can be otherwise as well. If the price of rice increases, the value of uh, derivative can go down as well. It depends on the relationship between the derivative and the and rice. Okay. So there are different kinds of derivatives: forwards, futures, options, and swaps. These are the four major kinds of derivatives that are there in the market. Now, forwards and futures are very similar. Are in fact fundamentally the same. There are only minor differences between these two. Options is a whole new category and so is swaps. Let's start with forwards and futures. Let's take an example. Person A wants to have carrots every month, but he expects prices of carrots to rise in the future. Now I am A, I eat carrots every month, so I need them month by month. But I am expecting that the price of carrots will increase in the future. What will happen if the price of carrots increase? my expenditure on carrots will also increase because I need them every month. What will I do? I will go to person B and I will say, hey, why don't you supply me X carrots at the price of Y every month? Now the price of Y, this price Y, maybe a current price or maybe a little more than the current price. Because if I expect the price of uh, carrots to go to up to say 20, and uh, y is 15 and the present price may be 10. So I'm giving him a premium for accepting uh, my offer, but because I'm expecting the price of carrots to increase to 20 from 10, so I'm trying to make a profit here. So I will go to another person and say, uh, why don't you supply me x carrots at the price of y every month. Now, when will b expect when will B accept the offer? If B expects the price of carrots to be less than 15, then what he, what he can do is he can buy carrots in the future from the market at a price less than 15 and supply the same carrots to A at the price of 15, thereby making a profit. So B will accept the offer only when he expects the price of carrots to fall. He will agree to supply X carrots for Y every month. This agreement is a forward. Now this customized agreement, the example of carrots being uh, agreed upon between A and B, it's a very customized agreement. Customized matlab, meri kuch needs hai, tumhari kuch expectations hai, A or B ki, and both of them come together uh, and make an agreement. This is a customized agreement. This is called a forward. When you make agreements on the stock exchange, when you deal in the stock exchange or commodity exchanges and deal with uh, the same derivatives there, then the agreements are standardized. You cannot have any kind of agreement with any other person. There are certain standard agreements which can be made in the market. So those are called futures. This is, this is the fundamental difference between forward and future. Otherwise, forward and future are the same, exactly the same with respect to their method of working. Thus, a forward is a customized contract between two entities where settlement takes place on a specified date in the future at today's pre-agreed price. The price is decided today, the future date is decided today and the settlement takes place on that specified date. Future is structurally similar. As I said, forward takes place on over the counter, over the counter market that is OTC market which is between any two people or any three people or any number of people uh, in this society and futures take place over the stock exchange. Now this is the basic difference between forwards and futures over the counter exchange period. They are customized and these are standardized as I said. They are less liquid. Why are they less liquid? Because if I as a person have entered into a forward contract with another person and in the middle of the contract I uh, need money or I need something else and I want to trade that forward agreement with someone else with a person C then it's very difficult 
for me to do so because it's a forward contract it's customized i it it would be very difficult to find another person who agrees or who also wants the same thing in the example of carrots a wanted carrots b was ready to sell carrots now if a wants to trade his right to someone else he would need another person who also wants carrots so it's less liquid another reason of less liquidity is default risk person b after the contract end ends person b b may say uh, the price of carrots is uh, too high in the market i will have to provide it to you at too low price uh, i cannot uh, you know on the contract if you want to take me to court let's do it it doesn't really matter because i'm losing out anyway so there is a default risk attached there but in a future the default risk is very low because there is a guarantee given by the stock exchange or the guarantors so it's more liquid now the payment is made at settlement date the derivative is not tradable you cannot trade it on the stock exchange you cannot you can only trade it between yourselves uh, between some uh, uh, with some third party but you cannot trade it on stock exchange so settlement between parties takes place at the end of commitment period normally this is what happens in a forward contract but in a future contract it's otherwise the value of derivative changes every day according to value of underlying asset because it's trading on the stock exchange so the value of derivative is changing every day um, so this makes possible the fact that an investor can trade the derivative on stock exchange uh this is an example of uh, what kind of question very basic question can come in the exam uh let's take the example the current value of a share in robotronics is 12.50 this is called s0 or spot price spot s0 is the spot price zero is today the spot price today is 12.50 this is the current value of a share right now one year risk less rate is 6% that is the rate of interest what is the price of one year forward contract on robotronic stock this is the first question now if you remember we did npv yesterday and uh, we understood that the present value is is equal to future value divided by 1 plus r raised to power n which is future value divided by 1 plus rate of return the market rate of return raised to power time period now what we are doing there is we are finding out the present value by dividing future value by 1 plus r of the uh, market expected rate of interest here we have to find the future value so what will happen is we will multiply present value by the same 1 plus r raised to power n this is what we are doing here in order to find the one year forward contract value which is fk we are multiplying spot price or the present value with 1 plus r raised to power n okay so this is i how we found out future value now here it has to be 2 years it is the question is what is the price of 2 year forward contract on robotronic stock so k here or t here or n time period can be written uh, expressed in any way i have ex expressed it through k it can be n as well so n here is 2 so if we multiply 12.5 with 1.06 raised to power 2 we will get 14.045 this is the future value of the forward contract now the second question is one year forward contract is being sold at 16 in the market it's being sold at 16 in the market iska matlab kya hua iska matlab hua ki main ek saal baad i will have the right to sell a forward contract at rupees 16 in the market and another person will have will have an obligation to buy it at 16 because it's being traded at 16 in the market ki ek saal ka forward contract hai isko 16 rupaye mein le lo agreement bana lo ki 16 rupaye mein hum ek saal baad isko exchange karenge so what i as an investor will do i will have the right to sell it as at, at rupees 16 in the market in the future but the expected future rate is 14.045 calculation ke hisab se this is the equilibrium or the expected future rate future rate kam hai i can sell it for more so i will sell the forward contract i will short the forward contract 
so uh, now there are two terms here short and long long is the right to buy and short is the right to sell <clears throat> so here i will short because then i will have the right to sell the forward contract at rupees 16 after 2 years i have the right to sell it at rupees 16 after 2 years but i can buy the same from the market at rupees 14.045 so i will make a profit because i will buy it at 14 and i will sell it at 16 thereby making a profit of almost 2 rupees instantly so what will i do i will borrow rupees 12.50 at at 6% from the market to purchase one robotronic stock so i will borrow this much money and purchase the stock after 2 years i will have to pay back this much money 12.50 at the rate of 6% but then by selling that stock i can get 16 rupees instantly so i will be making a profit of 1.955 this is how you make money in a forward and future market so this is a very basic question let's take another question current nifty is 1800 and minimum lot is 100 uh, now this may come minimum lot 100 rupees 100 ka hai ya 1000 ka hai ya 1 lakh ka hai so that only means that uh, you will have to buy 100 stocks of nifty minimum is 100 stocks so ek 1800 ka hai 100 ho gaye 180000 ke so 180000 minimum aapko kharch karna hi padega agar aapko lena hai to risk free rate diya hua hai 8% which is r and futures period is 3 months now ye maine iske diya hai kyunki future period isme 3 month hai saal mein nahi hai ye aa sakta hai question is tarah se now fair value kaise nikalenge हमें फ्यूचर वैल्यू निकालने के लिए हमने ऊपर फॉर्मूला देखा स्पॉट एच जीरो इन टू वन प्लस आर रेस्ट पर के और रेस्ट पर एन स्पॉट प्राइस पता है एटीन हंड्रेड आर इज एट परसेंट के इज थ्री मंथ्स नाउ थ्री मंथ्स कैन आल्सो बी रिटर्न एज थ्री बाई ट्वेल्व ईयर्स राइट सो थ्री बाई ट्वेल्व ईयर्स ये टाइम पीरियड नाउ इधर यू डू दिस एटीन हंड्रेड इंटू वन प्लस पॉइंट जीरो एट इन रेस्ट पर थ्री बाई ट्वेल्व नाउ दिस बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट टू सॉल्व थ्रू अ नॉर्मल कैलकुलेटर सो वॉट वी डू इज इसको ईयर्स में कन्वर्ट कर लेंगे इसको वन कर लेंगे और इसको हम ईयर में कन्वर्ट करने के लिए वी डिवाइड दिस बाय फोर बिकॉज देर आर फोर क्वार्टर्स सो टू सॉल्व दिस इंस्टेड ऑफ यूजिंग टाइम के इन डेसिमल्स वी डिवाइड आर टू मेक इट इक्वल टू रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट फॉर अ क्वार्टर हे दी रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट फॉर अ क्वार्टर वुड भी टू परसेंट टू परसेंट इज रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट फॉर अ क्वार्टर सो हम ने जो ये इक्वेशन अब निकाली है दिस इज फॉर अ क्वार्टर दिस इज ऑल्सो फॉर अ क्वार्टर बट दिस इज मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड अब इसको यहाँ पर चेंज करने के लिए हमने रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट को क्वार्टर में कर लिया और तो पूरा इक्वेशन जब क्वार्टर में आया तो ये हम टाइम पीरियड वन क्वार्टर ले रहे हैं वन क्वार्टर टाइम पीरियड है और ये रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट वन क्वार्टर का है तो इससे हम एक क्वार्टर का या थ्री मंथ्स का फ्यूचर रेट निकाल लेंगे इससे हमने मल्टीप्लाई किया एंड वी कम आउट विद द फ्यूचर रेट विच इज़ वन एट थ्री सिक्स वेरी ईजी टू सॉल्व now let's come to currency futures currency futures is also similar to normal futures there is not much of a difference let's take this example mr x purchases 1000 dollars at rupees 62 per dollar mr x ne 1000 dollar kharide at the exchange rate of 62 per dollar in 3 month future market future market mein kharide maine 3 mahine ki to matlab तीन महीने बाद आई विल हैव द राइट मिस्टर एक्स विल हैव द राइट टू बाय वन थाउजेंड डॉलर एट रुपीज़ सिक्सटी टू पर डॉलर एंड ड्यू डेट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दी हुई है ना एज पर टर्म्स ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इर रेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एक्चुअल रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन रुपी एंड डॉलर ऑन थर्टी एथ जून मिस्टर एक्स वुड गेट वन थाउजेंड डॉलर एट रुपीज़ सिक्सटी टू पर डॉलर कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता है कितना एक्चुअल प्राइस है मुझे या मिस्टर एक्स को तीन महीने बाद एक हज़ार डॉलर मिल जाएंगे इतने रेट से सिक्सटी टू पर डॉलर अब फ़ायदा है नुकसान कब होगा मिस्टर एक्स को इफ़ द एक्चुअल प्राइस ऑफ डॉलर इज रुपीज सिक्सटी फाइव एक्चुअल प्राइस है सिक्सटी फाइव पर डॉलर तो मिस्टर एक्स को फ़ायदा हो जाएगा कैसे फ़ायदा होगा एक्चुअल प्राइस है सिक्सटी फाइव फ्यूचर प्राइस है सिक्सटी टू तो मिस्टर एक्स क्या करेंगे मैं एक हज़ार डॉलर खरीद पाऊँगा बाई पेंग सिक्सटी टू थाउजेंड रुपीज़ सिक्सटी टू थाउजेंड रुपीज़ मैं दूसरी पार्टी को दूँगा वो मुझे एक हज़ार डॉलर दे देगा ठीक है ना अब वो मैं एक हज़ार डॉलर लेके मार्केट में जाऊंगा, मार्केट में वो एक हज़ार डॉलर दूंगा, और मुझे उसके बदले में सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज़ मिल जाएंगे क्योंकि मार्केट में रेट तो सिक्सटी फाइव चल रहा है 
so that is how I make a profit of three thousand. However, if the actual price is to be sixty, sixty अगर price है कम है तो फिर मेरे को loss हो जाएगा दो हजार रुपए का. One more thing related to derivatives is derivatives किए क्यों जाते हैं? Derivatives normally risk hedge करने के लिए किए जाते हैं या risk कम करने के लिए किए जाते हैं. जैसे यहाँ पर क्या किया? Mr. X ने rate fix कर लिया sixty two per dollar. Now he doesn't want to get into a situation जहाँ पे where uh, the price of or the exchange rate of rupee to dollar increases or decreases. He know that he can make a profit also, he can make a loss also. But he doesn't want to get into into a loss situation. So he wants to reduce his risk of exchanging this money three months from now. I as an investor, I as a normal person may need. Uh, some money in in uh, after a certain period of time so instead of waiting for the time period and expecting uh, the exchange rate to be favorable what i'll do is i'll fix certain exchange rate i'll go to the futures market i'll say yaar itna main pay kar sakta hu abhi ya fir 3 mahine baad agar bada to theek hai mere ko fayda ho jayega ghata to thoda nuksan hoga koi baat nahi but i am insured this is like Insurance of some kind that you are making. So derivatives are majorly done to hedge risk. But because in this, there is a possibility of making a profit or loss. So a lot of speculation also starts happening in the market because of this difference in the price. So these are the two major uses of derivatives: speculation as well as hedging of risk. Next, we'll come to options. 